Hi everyone, Maurice Ang here. Welcome to Tanks Invest, where we're going to be talking about investing, finance, and professional development. For today's videos, for entertainment purposes only, the stock that I'm about to talk about today will be ChargePoint or ChargePoint Holding, ticker CHPT. Uh, I've been investing into this stock for about six months so far, and uh, ever since we saw this whole rally uh, of the whole EV boom in Q3, Q4, uh, it's been selling off ever since and now it's been corrected over about 75% so far So I decided to buy in a thousand shares of ChargePoint as of today uh, And so I'm gonna go through my technical analysis on and also some of my insights so far on Why I decided to buy in today and where I see the stock going from here, right? Obviously, I'm bullish on this stock and I'm also going to give you guys my entry price point uh, you know some of the price point to look out for in terms of, of dollar cost averaging going forward and also gonna lastly give you guys my price predictions for the stock uh, for year-end 2021 as well so stay tuned stick around let's make some money in case you're just learning about charge point uh, about the business for the first time so charge point uh, was uh, used to be a spec called the switchback energy uh, and subsequently around like the February time period uh, the merger subsequently executed and now it's been trading uh, uh, called charge point uh, ever since uh, and as you can see on just the technical analysis over here uh, in the beginning when it was a spec it was trading about like the ten dollars level and then subsequently uh, has some momentum push you know as the news broke out and also with respect to the Q3 Q4 EV boom that we, we experienced you know with the whole euphoric pump that we saw of Tesla you know, Neo and Xpeng Lee and all those other comparable companies got pushed up. Uh, that subsequently drove this stock up, knowing the fact that that you know this is the company that provides charging stations for these companies going forward, right? So which subsequently created this huge rally, uh, went up all the way to this like forty dollars level, and then subsequently pumped up again. Sometimes in Q four, um, by the Christmas time, the Santa Claus rally. And ever since then, we've been selling off significantly all the way down from, you know, the $50 level, close to $50 level at the $49, $48 level, uh, selling all the way down right now. And we hit at one point about like the $20 level. And right now we've been uh, forming this uh, triple bottom right here at the moment, right? So, <clears throat> so, and this is a pretty strong resistance level that we're forming right now. And let me just draw the line for you guys real quick so you could see this more clearly right uh, uh excuse me as you can see that um we formed a bottom of about twenty dollars basically four times so far once here in last year in november before we got pumped up once again in the black swan events that occurred uh with respect to the whole uh yield spikes and also also with respect to the federal reserve speech that happened on that day that created that black swan events momentum that sold off and scare a lot of folks away. We hit all the way down to the nineteen and twenty dollars level again, and subsequently got like this uh, more of a dead cat bounce type of a uh, rally, and then subsequently bounced back down again to the twenty dollars level again. And right now we we got back up and now bouncing back again, retesting this level right now. So today I I, I uh, you know I've been waiting for this uh, resistance level to come down, and we did come down, and that's why I decided to buy it significantly. Uh, of a thousand shares and so far right now I have about four thousand five hundred shares of charge point right now and i bought in when i, I was a uh, way back in a day right uh, and i've been holding ever since and i was so surprised that we actually came back all the way back down to my original price point so some of the levels to watch out for right now are knowing the fact that this is kind of like a upside down w shape which is a uh, you know kind of a bearish type of sign in terms of uh you know just look at the chart perspective but look at the rsi we are very oversold at the moment you know on a daily perspective we are basically going downwards and also in the macd we're crossing downwards right now but with respect to the risk and reward ratio perspective i foresee you know i foresee us to be testing this again if we break through i think the next resistance level is going to be somewhere around here at the 17 dollars level so which is not that far away from you know the 20 dollars level uh, and knowing the fact that, you know, we can never really time the market and we can never really time the momentum among, you know, uh, investment managers and retail traders that, you know, just because of the three triple test bottoms that we've performed so far, it just makes sense to, you know, buy in right now at this optimal level if you believe in this business long term, right? And I think, you know, if we were to bounce back, we'll go back and test this 
level one more time at the $30 level and the subsequent contingent on some of the earnings that we're going to be expecting going forward, contingent on the global chip shortage going forward and the econom you know, economic outlooks uh, for the US market and the global market going forward as well, which will have obviously a seismic macroeconomical effect propelling this business. Uh, we should be testing somewhere around like the $36, uh, $40 level um, you know, by end of this year, uh, by Q3 and Q4, which as we know is most of the time uh, the, the strongest uh, quarters uh, of, of the year for a lot of the automotive industry businesses and also with respect to the Santa Claus rally uh, that also has uh, some sort of uh, psychological effect as well. Um, so those are the areas to look out for. So I bought in a thousand shares today again, right? Now I have about 4,500 shares. And if we go down again to this uh, level of the 17 or $16, dollars level, I would totally buy way more, another thousand five hundred shares. Try to slowly build that up to maybe six thousand five hundred shares, or you know even ten thousand shares. So this business, in the fundamental perspective, is definitely a strong. Uh, stable business you know the growth is not going to be substantial or exponential comparable to like a tesla um, this is just like basically shelving selling shovels to the gold miners you know like the gold rush back in the day in that comparable uh analogy so just moving on to ch tip ranks just to see how the wall street consensus looks like with respect to the four analyst ratings that we have here we have three buys and one hold and with respect to the trajectory that they are defining for us right here, on an average perspective, is $39, which is a, almost a 95% of an upside from here. And if we were to you know, exceed that upside case right here on the high level, $46, which is going to give you subsequently about like 135, 125% of upside from here. On the low spectrum, still, you know, way higher than what we currently are trading at, about like the $20.50 level, still significantly higher. So overall, based on consensus, we know that we are overly sold and the valuations don't make sense anymore based on the current stock reflections. Um, there's definitely a lot of fear going on with respect to public investors and investors uh, uh, appetites as a whole at the moment. So definitely another propeller in terms of uh, you know why I decided to buy a thousand shares today. So just take a look at the institutional investors that have been uh, investing into charge points so far dated from April 16th. Uh, last week to all the way uh, to October 22nd last year, you could see that the collective uh, investors that we see here are, you know, definitely sizable type of shares that they've been purchasing in terms of the share numbers and also the market value and some of the allocation holding as well. You can see that West Oak decided to allocate close to 1% of this holding. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, Deutsche Bank decided to buy 165,000 shares. You could see that Ontario Pension Fund, which is a, um, you know, a Canadian pension fund, decided to buy 1,000 shares. JP Morgan, obviously, is a global bank that decided to buy 10,000 shares. And this is not the first time buying. They've been buying ever since last year as well. If you look down below, um, you'll see that they were buying in some, somewhere around like the November time period again. You know, relatively small position, but uh, slowly building up, you know, slowly by slowly, knowing the fact that they are long-term investors. Brookfield Asset Management, a large in, uh, institutional investor, bought in at $1.5 million. Uh, and going down the line, see any of the, uh, you know, high-quality investors. Like Healthcare Ontario, again, they bought in somewhere in February again. So they bought in subsequent within the same quarter. Uh, Raymond James, another big investment bank, bought in 16,000 shares. Um, and so on and so forth. And you can see it right here, California Public Employee Retirement System bought in 64,000 uh, shares, uh, you know, at a 2.6 million valuation. Um, and I believe they bought in another time again, back when it was um, in November, uh, again, a 65,000 shares. So they cl have close to about 130,000 shares so far at a valuation close to about 3.5 million so far. So you can see, collectively speaking, definitely a lot of interest among sophisticated investors. Uh, and most of these investors are not like day traders, right? They are long-term value investors, similar to the way I like to invest. So which is a good indicator that, you know, this company definitely has strong fundamentals. And you can see the, with respect to the aggression, or not, not aggression, more 
of the propensity to buy more shares is more leaning towards you know when the stock was trading around like the eighteen dollars twenty dollars level right so um so i think right now going back to the you know to to the chart that i mentioned earlier going back to from you know the 45 level to now 18 20 dollars level is a great time another opportunity for us long-term investor to buying at the moment so just looking at the price target right here that i have uh you know obviously the 2050 level is definitely fair you know knowing the fact that we have tested the resistance three four times so far in the cross of last six months and uh, if we were to breach that resistance level right that quadruple resistance level that we've been forming at the bottom i think the next level 1850 would be totally attractive you know i would totally start grabbing up more and more shares and if we get down to the like, 1750 or like even the 1680 level which I foresee that to be very unlikely and unless it's some sort of like a market crash or some sort of, again, like the black swan events uh, that occurs, um, you know, which the likelihood of this would be like 5 10%, uh, which is very low in terms of my possibility of spectrum. I would totally just load up on this stock uh, like it's no tomorrow. And my year in price target uh, for end of year contingent on you know all the macro macroeconomical trends trending in the right directions with the right momentums, also with more adoptions for EV vehicles and the economy starts slowly coming back up. I think the forty dollars level you know would definitely be ideal. I think I'm probably you know sandbagging this at the moment, knowing the fact that at all time high we're at the fifties level. We I think even in some trading platform we hit almost at like $60 level as well uh, I think on Robinhood I, I've, I've seen that happen before so $40 definitely a more conservative side but I think reaching this level generating a 95% of an upside or two times your money from here if you were to buy in a $20 level it's very very possible and the likelihood of this would be I would give this at least a 75% in terms of my possibility spectrum uh, and again, I'm not a wizard, right? I'm not a financial advisor. So really take this as a grain of salt. But based on the fundamentals, based on the quantitative analysis, I think the likelihood of this is pretty high. All right, so that's it for charge point today. I uh, appreciate you guys dropping by again. Uh, please, again, hit the like buttons below, the subscribe button below, and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions uh, with respect to a charge point or any other stocks that I've talked about so far. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks so much.